true wisdom comes from God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but if any of you lack wisdom, you should pray to God. Who will give it to you because God gives generously and graciously to all. Spend enough time to pray. I remember I quoted Ellen White here when she said that if, if you used to pray two times a day, but when it comes to the choice of partner, you have to pray four times a day. Why we need wisdom from above? We need God's wisdom. Love wisdom like a sister. Hallelujah. Make insight a beloved member of your family. Let them protect you from an affair with an immoral woman. From listening to the flutter of what? Huh? You know, they will promise a lot of things. But if you have wisdom, you will know that this is not the right one. Number two, religious lifestyle. Consider this. As I said previously, you have to pray for wisdom. And number two, religious lifestyle. Sometimes, I, I know it happens, but let me tell you this. If you are in one family and you have different types of faith within one family, there is a great possibility of confusing your children. They will never know which one faith to follow. But if you are, you are believing in one faith, it is very easy for you to lead your children. Spiritual harmony in a family is one of the most important key factors to successful marriage. The Bible says in Amos 3.3 NLT, Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? When you talk about fasting and prayer, your husband says, no fasting here, we have to eat. Just imagine you are praying. And you know most of the times when you, you, are, you are fasting and praying, it is as if the devil wants to confuse you more. A lot of interruptions will happen. And it is even tough when they are coming from the family. But just imagine you have your partner who believes in prayer, who believes in God, and when you are fasting, she or he will take care of you, preparing food, special food for you, preparing the right environment for you. And when your kids are shouting, is the one to tell them, stay away, your father is praying. But if you have someone, when they are shouting at you, he say, yes, good, shout even more. I don't want him to pray. There is no tough war like a spiritual warfare. But if you have someone to hold your hand while you are fighting, the battle becomes easier. Hallelujah. Just think of me like me now. My example. Hallelujah. I am preaching here. Back home, my wife is praying for me. Hallelujah. Our, our firstborn, David Jr., knows how to fast when I'm preaching. If I have a evangelical campaign, he's studying at the moment, but he will sit one day to pray for me. And even teachers will tell Junior, why don't you eat? He will just respond, I don't want to eat because I told them that when you are fasting, don't show off. It's a private thing. But it gives me more power when I'm standing here and I know someone is praying for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, my mother taught me to pray. Hallelujah. 
and she's watching me right now. My father taught me to start books. You, you see this combination? So when you see me, I'm quoting a lot of books I just borrowed from my father. When you see me talking about the prayer, I borrowed it from my mother. Now this combination produced a pastor. Hallelujah. Religious lifestyle in family is one of the most important things to make your marriage work. Choose the character. You remember this? I told you behavior may fool you. But character is the most important thing. What kind of person are you looking for? Uh, myself, I'm a little bit sanguine and parts of me choleric. So I needed a partner who can fit this combination. You may say, Pastor, what's wrong with you? I can read books and I can leave all of them on bed. <laughs> but my wife is very smart. Hallelujah. So when she gets in, she will collect all of the books and instead of telling me you should put them there i will just see her collecting books when i see and put them at the right place that is the sign that when you finish reading books put them there <laughs> choose the character Hallelujah. Remember Proverbs 31 verse 10. The Bible says, A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Yes. Unfortunately, nowadays people are looking for the outward appearance. Remember I told you in Africa, we are looking for number... You will never eat number eight. Number eight will never help you take care of your children. A wife of noble character. Who can find she is worth far more than rubies. She is a hard worker. Hallelujah. Strong and industrious. She knows the value of everything she makes and works late into the night. Hard worker. What is character? Character is the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. But what is behavior then? The way in which an animal or person behaves in response to a particular situation or stimulus. So you may find a person who is dressing well, reading the Bible, but don't forget, many are hunters. Maybe he's hunting something. Don't forget that. You need enough time. Something that you do often and regularly sometimes without knowing that you are doing. That is behavior. But don't forget this. When you choose the right partner, there is so-called emotional maturity. This is very important. Along the way, we'll be learning about emotional intelligence because this is, is very important than IQ, according to me. You may have very good IQ, but if you don't have emotional intelligence, it's very hard. So, when you choose the right partner, make sure that you consider emotional maturity. This is very important. Don't choose someone who will just 
open up everything before people. You remember, in our African culture, all families, we have special language for a particular family. Let me give you an example. Maybe you are sitting with your friends, you are eating, and you have discovered that the food does not have enough salt, or you are taking a, a drink and there is not enough sugar, in quote, sugar is not good for you. And then if you are not emotionally matured, you will find that you begin to talk harshly to your wife. But we have special language for a, for a particular family like this one. If I see my father just working up and walking this way, I know he wants me to get out of the table. That is a sign. And if I see my father just, when we are eating, he would call me David. When I look at him, and then he says, I know something here is wrong. I have to wash my mouth. Anyone who is emotionally matured, you will know when your emotions are leading you in a wrong way, and you will control your emotions. Hallelujah. Keep your temper under control. It is foolish to harbor a grudge. By the way, just four minutes of anger will kill your immune system for three weeks. Four minutes. This certain someone should be non-reactive in the sense that they think before they act. They don't let their instant emotions rule their actions. They are independent and self-assured, which means they are not looking to you to fix or complete them. The person who is emotionally matured is someone who is non-reactive in the sense that they think before they act. They don't let their instant emotions rule their actions. They are independent and self-assured, which means they are not looking to you to fix or complete them. Ready to learn. Choose someone who is ready to learn. What does it mean? Have you ever met someone who knows everything? Knows everything. When you just begin speaking, he's already there. When you talk about Nakuru Naivasha, Nakuru is like this. Before you finish, you go, oh, I know, I know, I know. Now Nakuru is, is very cold. Nakuru. Myself, when I meet such a person, I just keep quiet. You know, when you keep talking, you just repeat what you know. But when you keep quiet and listen, you get something new. Hallelujah. That is my principle of life. When I meet someone who knows more than me, I keep quiet. I don't talk. I ask more questions. But pastor, you are a pastor. Yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm not a lawyer. I'm a pastor, yes, but I'm not a doctor. So when I see a doctor, when a doctor speaks, I keep quiet. I better ask more questions. Even if I know something, I will pretend as if I don't know, so that I can improve my knowledge whether I'm right or wrong. Hallelujah. It's so beautiful to have a partner who is ready to know. I have a lot of books and I buy books. That's one of my hobbies. When I see a good book, I just buy. My iPad is full of books. And when I see something good for my marriage, I just tell my wife, next week we are going out. When we are there waiting for food, we are reading something. Hallelujah. 
we are reading something. My wife is one of the women who are ready to learn always. And I like that. Hallelujah. No one knows everything. You know, sometimes when they introduce me, I, I let them talk what they want to talk, but there is something which I, I don't feel comfortable when they talk about me, like calling me an expert. Why I don't like this? Because I'm learning every day. There is something I don't know I have to learn. Wisdom comes from learning. A fool knows everything. I remember Mwalim Nyerere was talking about the difference between a fool and a person who is ignorant. Mwalim Nyerere says, foolishness is like hate. We have tall people and short ones. You can't change that. A fool is a fool. <laughs> Always you have to learn. Homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. Where there is knowledge, the rooms are furnished with valuable, beautiful things. When we read this verse, sometimes we think that the, the Bible is talking about the house. The Bible is speaking about homes. There is a difference between a house and home. You can have a beautiful house, but very bad home. Homes are built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. Where there is knowledge, the rooms are furnished with valuable, beautiful things. What kind of knowledge the Bible is speaking about? Is the knowledge how to handle marriage. You have to know the way women think and the way men think. You have to know how to raise your children. You have to know, you, you have to dedicate your time to knowledge to start this means someone who is willing to think and learn about themselves who is open to reflecting on the past and involving in the present can you sit down and make your own evaluation can you sit down and look at yourself and say this way i was like this but that is not good i have to change can you sit down and find a way to change your own behavior? Are you comfortable of the way you behave? If you can sit down and criticize yourself, you are a wise person. Hallelujah. Family history. You have to know this also. Don't ignore this. Linda Carroll says, it's important to know how connected a potential partner is to their family members and the quality of these relationships okay most of uh, character or behaviors we face in relationship when you look at them in deep you will discover that they have the root cause in the family issues the way they were grown up kind of family members they were surrounding the particular person the, the way they were criticizing each other. You may find a person who is very polite. He's not very polite, but maybe has been criticized so hard in the family, so they are not ready to open up. When you know that one, you have to consider this and be a very good friend to this person so that he or she can open up. So you have to know the family background of, of your partner. Past relationship matters. Very few people are ready to talk about their past relationships. And most of them will only talk the bad side of their partners, but not theirs. I have never seen a person who says, I just broke with another person six months ago, but the reason this breakup is me. No one says that. But everyone will tell you, that person was a very bad one. I tried my level best to fix him, but he was not ready. Very few people will tell you, I am the reason why. 
I met only one person in my life who admitted before me after divorce. He said, Pastor, I really appreciate you because after divorce, you called my wife and I, you took enough time to talk to us, and we are ready to reunite again, but I must admit, Pastor, I am the reason for this divorce. I said, you are a gentleman. If you can admit, a special man. It's hard for us to admit. I told you that we don't say sorry with our mouth, but we say sorry with our action. When something is wrong, I will not, I'll not say sorry, but I will buy something for you. That's the end of it. Past relationship matters. It is important to discover what kind of friendship someone has had or currently have. The best sign is that they still keep a few of their oldest friends. Linda said, do they speak of past lovers? Do they speak of past lovers in derogatory terms such as she was crazy or he was total narcissist? If they do, they will talk bad about you later if you break up. Be careful. Remember, you are choosing a person to be by your side. Hallelujah. By your side. Ellen White says, let a young man seek one to stand by his side who is fitted to bear a share of life's burdens, one whose influence will ennoble and refine him and who will make him help in her love. I know that, just watch this, I know that to the mind of a man infatuated with love and thought of marriage, these questions will be brushed away as though they were of no consequence. But these things should be dull considered for they have a bearing upon your future life. Don't forget this. And I'm praying for you tonight that may the Holy Spirit help you to seek wisdom from above and take enough time to pray for wisdom and ask God to give you courage to say no to a person who the Holy Spirit will reveal to you that you don't have good future with him or her. I know sometimes we have something like a very big connection. But I'm, I'm telling you tonight, when it comes to marriage, it's better to break courtship of friendship than marriage. May the Lord help you to take courage to get out if it will cost you to get out. And may the Lord help you and to open your eyes to see the right person for you. May we stand for the word of prayer. Father, I am praying for young people tonight. I'm praying for those who they are just somewhere and they don't know which way to go. They are connected with a person, but deep within their heart, they feel that this person is not for them. But how can they get out of this? They don't have enough courage to say no. May the Holy Spirit reveal to them the right path to go. Father, we are praying for those who maybe after deep prayer, you have given them wisdom to know the right one. Father, maintain.